Hey, if you've gotten any mail, watch TV, listened to your phone ring, gotten a text message, you probably have figured out Medicare can be extremely confusing and there is a ton of different plan options available to you and it creates frustration when there's not clarity exactly on what you need and what plan is gonna be the best fit for you. If you'll stick around in just a minute, I'm gonna dive into eliminating the frustrations, simplifying the plan options for you so you can make an informed decision for yourself and move forward in your progression of choosing the correct Medicare health plan. Stick around, I'll be back in just a second. Often we hear there's a lot of confusion wrapped around what plan options are available for you when it comes to choosing a Medicare health plan. That, that, and that out of that, that question comes a lot of frustration, a lot of under, misunderstanding, and then often a lot of fears. So today I'm going to break down exactly how to eliminate those frustrations, the desires that most of you have, and then address the fears and then simplify the plan options for you so you can understand how to choose a Medicare health plan based on your need and simplifying the process. Um, let's walk through one of the things that often is said is, you know, can you give me clear and simple explanations when it comes to Medicare, Medicare health plans and what options I have? And I'm gonna be walking you through here in just a second. And then also, we want to be able to eliminate the fears of really the inadequate coverage. So often when people are coming off an employer-based plan or maybe they've never been insured before and they're looking at major health complications as they age into 65 or they're older, they're often uh, plagued with the fear of having inadequate, inadequate coverage and then having major out-of-pocket expense and costs going into Medicare. And we're gonna cover and eliminate those fears today, eliminate the frustration, and then really create the ability for you to move forward when it comes to choosing a Medicare health plan. So I wanna explain some basics to you so you understand how Medicare works and the costs behind Medicare, and then really a key that unlocks the door for you to enroll into the proper health plan. So if you have Medicare Part A and Part B, that is basic coverage. So those that are turning 65 or coming off an employer-based plan, you may be 68 years of age, and getting ready to retire and you're looking at you know enrolling into medicare part a and part b that is the base uh, model when it comes to enrolling into a health plan uh, or enrolling into medicare and what does part a actually cover well part a if you think about a hospital and the visual imagery that you have in your mind of the hospital around you or a hospital you've been in before but if we can just take the the time for a second to visualize a hospital Part A is basically going to cover anything that happens within that hospital. And then Part A has a deductible. Right now that deductible is $1,632 per stay every 60 days. So that means if you go in the hospital, stay a few days, come out, and you go back in the hospital within that 60 days, you're not paying this deductible again. But if you stay out of the hospital beyond 60 days and you go back into the hospital for that year, you're paying this $1,632 deductible. Now, it's uh, the year 2024 right now. The deductible is $1,632. That, that deductible goes up with the cost of a living adjustment. So if you're watching this at a later year, you need to make sure what the Part A deductible is. It's gonna be in and around this amount. But that's how Part A deductible works. So when you go into the hospital, and again, just thinking about the visual imagery of a hospital, when you go into the hospital for inpatient care, everything falls underneath this Part A deductible, typically for surgeries, basic surgeries, and things done inside the hospital. So this is an example, really a breakout of a worst case scenario. So let's say you go into the hospital you're going to have a, a Part A deductible of 1632 and you stay 60 days consecutively. You're going to have zero cost in addition to that Part A deductible. But now all of a sudden you stay 61 through 90 days. That's Hey everyone, my name is Kelby Hightower. I'm a principal broker at Medicare Hub. And often we hear there's a lot of confusion wrapped around what plan options are available for you when it comes to choosing a Medicare health plan. That, that, and that out of that, that question comes a lot of frustration, a lot of under, misunderstanding, and then often a lot of fears. So today I'm gonna to break down exactly how to eliminate those frustrations, the desires that most of you have, and then address the fears and then simplify the plan options for you so you can understand how to choose a Medicare health plan based on your need and simplifying the process. Um, let's walk through one of the things that often is said is, you know, can you give me clear and simple explanations when it comes to Medicare, Medicare health plans and what options I have? 
and I'm going to be walking you through here in just a second. And then also, we want to be able to eliminate the fears of really the inadequate coverage. So often when people are coming off an employer-based plan or maybe they've never been insured before and they're looking at major health complications as they age into 65 or they're older, they're often uh, plagued with the fear of having inadequate, inadequate coverage and then having major out-of-pocket expense and costs going into Medicare. And we're going to cover and eliminate those fears today, eliminate the frustration, and then really create the ability for you to move forward when it comes to choosing a Medicare health plan. So I want to explain some basics to you so you understand how Medicare works and the cost behind Medicare, and then really a key that unlocks the door for you to enroll into the proper health plan. So if you have Medicare Part A and Part B, that is basic coverage. So those that are turning 65 or coming off an employer-based plan, you may be 68 years of age, and getting ready to retire and you're looking at you know enrolling into medicare part a and part b that is the base uh, model when it comes to enrolling into a health plan uh, or enrolling into medicare and what does part a actually cover well part a if you think about a hospital and the visual imagery that you have in your mind of the hospital around you or a hospital you've been in before but if we can just take the the time for a second to visualize a hospital Part A is basically going to cover anything that happens within that hospital. And then Part A has a deductible. Right now that deductible is $1,632 per stay every 60 days. So that means if you go in the hospital, stay a few days, come out, and you go back in the hospital within that 60 days, you're not paying this deductible again. But if you stay out of the hospital beyond 60 days and you go back into the hospital for that year, you're paying this $1,632 uh, deductible. Now, it's uh, the year 2024. Right now, the deductible is $1,632. That, that deductible goes up with the cost of a living adjustment. So if you're watching this at a later year, you need to make sure what the Part A deductible is. It's going to be in and around this amount. But that's how Part A deductible works. So when you go into the hospital, and again, just thinking about the visual imagery of a hospital, when you go into the hospital for inpatient care, everything falls underneath this Part A deductible, typically for surgeries, basic surgeries, and things done inside the hospital. So this is an example, really a breakout of a worst case scenario. So let's say you go into the hospital you're gonna have a, a Part A deductible of 1632, and you stay 60 days consecutively. You're gonna have zero cost in addition to that Part A deductible, but now all of a sudden you stay 61 through 90 days. That's going to actually have a cost per day. 61 through 90 has a cost per day associated with it, and that's gonna equate out to $11,832 in the year 2024, right now that the year that we're in. So if you go 91 to 50, 150 days, you're gonna use up what they call lifetime reserve days. Uh, lifetime reserve days are 60 days that Medicare gives you. So if you use those days up, the next time you go in the hospital and you had a cat catastrophic event, if you stay up through 90 days, uh, and you've used up your, your, your lifetime reserve days, after 90 days, you're gonna pay 100% of the cost of staying in that hospital. But how it is in this scenario, we have 60 or 91 to 150 days that you have lifetime reserve days. That's gonna equate because you're gonna have a cost per day staying in the hospital. So you have a deductible, you stayed up to 90 days, you stayed up to 150 days, you're at $48,144. And if you total this up, if you stay so far up to 150 days, you would owe $61,608. So if you want to know how much does it cost you to stay in the hospital for 150 days on Medicare Part A and Part B, this is going to be the fee. Now the fear around that is, oh my gosh, that's a ton of money. I would have to sell something, get rid of something, cash out a 401k. I don't have that kind of cash in the bank to cover this cost. And we're going to cover here shortly exactly how to eliminate that cost or the majority of that cost associated with that. So it kind of begs to differ to have this big question around Medicare Part A. Exactly what are you gonna pay? Well, you, you know you're gonna pay a minimum of 1632 just having basic Medicare Part A and then Part B that we're gonna cover in just a minute. If you'll stick around, we're gonna be back and talk about Medicare Part B and the cost associated with that. The Medicare Part A, you see you have a, a risk of $1,632 all the way up to over almost $62,000 in cost. I'll be back in just a second.
So I'm back, I'm gonna dive into what Medicare Part B covers. And so Medicare Part B, if you, if you understand, Part A is always talking about what's inside of the hospital and what goes on inside of the, that hospital. Medicare Part B is really outpatient. It's, it's what's going on outside of the hospital, thus why the arrow is here to indicate just outside of the hospital. So this is gonna include the things like your, your uh, primary care doctor, your specialist outpatient facility, uh, outpatient surgeries, therapies, diagnostic, blood work, lab work, x-rays, things like that. That's going to be things done outside of the hospital and you're going to have an associated cost that we're going to cover here in just a moment. And then you're going to have a Medicare Part B premium. So the good thing about Medicare is if you've worked 10 years or 40 quarters or longer, you've paid in FICA taxes and that's going to pay your Part A and you're not going to have a Part A premium but Medicare has a standardized Medicare Part B premium. Now determined by the year you're in right now, that, that premium is $174.20, but determined by the year you're in, it's gonna dictate whether or not your Part B premium is a little bit higher. So every year that in 2025 and 2026, it's gonna go up a little bit, adjusted by the cost of living adjustment that occurs every year. So you're gonna have a Medicare Part B premium. So Part A is zero premium. You have no additional cost for that. Part B, you're gonna have an associated premium with that. Now, for you guys that are higher income, you're gonna have a thing called IRMA. And IRMA is basically a scale, and you see this here. Uh, if you will click below, there's a link below in this video that will allow you to be able to get the actual scale, and it shows you what the income projections are. So if you're a married couple right now, making $203,000 or more, you're gonna have an adjustment from 174.70, and it's gonna adjust up your Medicare Part B premium to the next uh, income bracket, and then so on and so on. So if your income, combined income, is $750,000 or more, or you've had a lifetime changing event where you sold a piece of property or a farm, or you've moved from California into Tennessee where we live, and you've sold a house there for 1.2 million two years ago, IRMA bases what your income is uh, and, and dictates what your Part B premium is based off of two years ago. So there's some moving parts with IRMA. There's some ways to be able to send in the form and reduce the cost of your Medicare Part B uh, premium if you've had a lifetime event two years ago, like selling a piece of property, moving, cashing out a 401k. And if your income is at a lower income bracket, but it shows that you had a higher earning based on those, those circumstances, there's a way to be able to reduce that. We talk about that in other videos. But that's IRMA and that can adjust or make your Part B premium higher. Now Part B also has a deductible. Right now it's a $240 deductible. Again, that deductible raises each year. And de depending on what year you're in, you just need to make sure you check and see what the Part B deductible is. But this Part B deductible is an annual deductible. That means you pay it one time and one time only, and then you have no additional cost. Where Part A has a deductible, that you pay each time you go in the hospital for every 60 days that you're out, you pay that Part A deductible again. And in theory, the cycle of 150 days, if you did that, did that two times in a year, you would have additional costs and all kinds of different things going on if you were staying long uh, periods of time in the hospital. Typically, that is not going to happen. Uh, in the 17 years of me doing this business, I've never had a client go into the hospital and stay that long a period of time, but it can happen. I always oft, often say Superman is an exception to that. He was in the hospital for a long period of time when he fell off a horse, broke his neck, and obviously ended up, um, he's passed away now, but he had extreme medical conditions that, that made him stay in the hospital for a long period, period of time to be stabilized, and people can stay in the hospital for long periods of time. Part B uh, fees. so. You're gonna have a Medicare Part B deductible, and you're also, if you're just on original Medicare Part A and Part B, just the basic coverage that Medicare provides you, you're gonna also have a 20% fee for those services outside of the hospital. So anything associated with your doctor, specialist, outpatient surgery, diagnostic services, and things like that. The things that are gonna be covered by Medicare Part A and Part B are gonna be like preventative, uh, preventative screenings and preventative services. Those are all included in the Medicare uh, when you turn 65 or if you're going on to Medicare Part A and Part B, they're going to provide you services for pre preventative, bone mass measurements, colorectal, prostate screenings, immunization, flu shots. For you ladies, well-woman checkups and physicals and annual examinations, 
They're going to provide screenings if you're high risk of cancer, screenings for high risk of diabetes. They provide those screenings also at no cost. But otherwise, you're going to be paying 20% of the billable rate, and it's a fee for service fee. So Medicare has a standardized fee that doctors can charge. You're going to pay 20% of that. And then also the doctor can choose, and typically they do not do this, but they can choose to charge you an excess charge of 15% more than what the Medicare fee for service uh, table says the, the fee is. So let's give the hypothetical. You go to your primary care doctor, there's a fee schedule of hundred dollars and they're going to charge you the excess charge. You would owe $115. Really you would owe, you know, 20% of that and then they can charge you an additional 15% charge fee onto that excess. So what does that mean? So Medicare part A and part B have pretty high cost. You know, you never really know. And I had the question mark up earlier, exactly what am I gonna pay for Medicare Part A? What am I gonna pay for Part B? So this is really the simplest analogy that I like to be able to use because it's one of the things that you can actually get a visual imagery of what Medicare Part A and Part B does. If you stick around, I'm gonna dive exactly into how this key unlocks the door and allows you to enroll into a Medicare health plan and to eliminate most and if not all the costs that we just talked about in just a second. You're probably thinking the same thing most people that are 65 and older are thinking, and that is Medicare is extremely confusing. One of the things that we do is provide a Medicare Made Simple workshop to any and everyone that wants to register for the free workshop and also a guidebook that guides them through anything and everything they need to know about Medicare. Guys, my name is Kelby Hightower. I'm the CEO of Medicare Hub. If you would like a free copy of our workshop, click below, register today, and we'll send that to you along with a ton of other free resources. We provide anybody that, that registers for the workshop today. Talk to you soon. So let's dive into how Medicare Part A and Part B equate to a key. So I always like to say if you have Part A and Part B, you have an in, in, in the mindset of like an entire key. And what does a, a key to do? A key unlocks the door. So if we're gonna give the analogy of your health plan options in reference to a house, this key being your Medicare Part A and Part B is gonna unlock the door and allow you to be able to get into that house. And there's really gonna be only two directions that we can take within, within this house or two rooms, okay? So you're gonna have option one, a room one for a health plan, and then option two or room two within this option. Once we're enrolled into Medicare Part B, Part A and Part B, we're allowed to step into our health plan options or this house that has these two rooms. And let's go over the two options. So the first option is a Medicare supplement. The second option is going to be typically a Medicare Advantage or Part C plan. So those really are the two main health plan options that are gonna cover your Part A and Part B services. We're gonna dive into a little bit of detail about these here in just a second. But these are, this is, you know, room one, room two, and then room three here really goes with Medicare supplements. So if you enroll into a Medicare supplement, you want to pick up a pre prescription drug plan. Why do you wanna be able to do that? Well, one, the government will penalize you if you do not pick up a drug plan and in the future you need a drug plan to reduce the cost of your medication. For some of you guys that are younger and turning 65 or coming off an employer-based plan and you're healthy, you often say, I don't need a drug plan. Why do I need to get that? And I often say, you're going to be penalized if you do not need it. And then if you get halfway through the year and you're prescribed a medication based on a condition that you come up with or a disease or something that happens to you, you're not going to have drug coverage and you're going to be holding the bag for several hundreds of dollars a month for name brand medications that can be on these formularies. So what I encourage people to do, choose one of the options, Medicare supplement and get a drug plan or a Medicare Advantage plan that already has a drug plan built into most of these plans. And that's what we typically put most of our clients on when we're signing somebody up. So what does that mean? Well, that means you're gonna probably have a lot of questions about things that I'm not gonna cover in this video today and you want a lot of in-depth understanding of when can I enroll, when, what do I do, how do I enroll, and all these different moving parts of Medicare. And I'm gonna encourage you to sign up for our on-demand Medicare Made Simple workshop. There's gonna be a link in the description right below. If you'll click on that link, that's gonna open a page, you'll put your information in there, and we're gonna actually email you a copy of a complete video series, a workshop that I have done 
that dives into all the different details Schedule about Medicare. Schedule a one-on-one -on -one call with one of our licensed agents here in the office. Collect Correct information, walk you through how Medicare works, uh, see what your situation is, help you determine whether or not you need a Medicare supplement plan with a prescription drug plan or a Medicare Advantage plan, and really help you make that next decision when it comes to choosing a Medicare health plan. So just to recap real quick, a lot of times you guys are frustrated because of all the different plan options. What we learned in this video is pretty simple. There's really two major plan options, Medicare supplement, Medicare Advantage. And then in those Medicare supplements and Medicare Advantage, there's different plan options. And I'm gonna be covering another video uh, on our next, next video. If you watch, it's gonna dive into a Medicare supplement and we're gonna dive into a Medicare Advantage and explain those two. Or you can watch the other content we have on our, our, our YouTube channel. It dives into the different parts of Medicare, the different types of Medicare Advantage, the pluses, the minuses of Medicare Advantage, and also the pluses, the minuses of Medicare supplements. And then you can always schedule and call, uh, schedule a time and call us. We're going to also have a link below that you can actually click on for a one-to-one -one call and schedule that today. Guys, until next time, you guys have a great day and I'll see you on the other side.